Hello, everyone, and welcome to week 32 of MSK Unknown Case Series. Today, I'm showing you a frontal radiograph of the left knee. If we scrutinize this left knee, notice that there's a radiolucent lesion involving the proximal tibial metaphysis. This lesion is somewhat heterogeneous. It extends to the subarticular bone. It involves not only the metaphysis, but also the epiphysis. So that's an important feature. It also has cortical breakthrough. There's indistinctness of the medial proximal tibial cortex. There are areas of sclerosis peripherally, but most of the lesion is radiolucent. If we turn to the MRI, we have coronal PD images, coronal T2 fat sat images, and T1 fat sat post contrast images. On the PD, it's, you know, ISO to slightly hyper intense to muscle. On T2, it's heterogeneously bright with some areas of cystic change, maybe even some fluid, fluid levels. And on the post contrast, there's heterogeneous enhancement of the lesion. And you can see that there's some cortical break. It extends past the bone. There's some soft tissue edema and enhancement associated with this lesion. So the question that I have for all of you guys is what's the most likely diagnosis in this 33 year old male? Is this a case of chondroblastoma, eosinophilic granuloma, giant cell tumor, or subacute osteomyelitis or Brody's abscess? What's the most likely diagnosis here? And of course, the age is very important here. This is a 33-year-old male. The best answer in this case would be most likely a giant cell tumor, and I'll explain why. But first, I want to kind of go over, anytime you see a radiolucent lesion in the epiphysis, that should automatically narrow your differential diagnosis to really four things, which are the four entities in the question stem, which is a giant cell tumor, eosinophilic granuloma, subacute osteomyelitis, and of course, a chondroblastoma. A giant cell tumor was the best answer in this case because the age range was consistent with a giant cell tumor. Most giant cell tumors happen in patients that are between 20 and 50 years of age. This patient was 33 years old. Uh, typically, giant cell tumors will be radiolucent with a non-sclerotic rim. I know in this case, there was some sclerosis along the rim, but you know not everything fits the textbook. This was a biopsy-proven case of giant cell tumor. EG typically can be radiolucent as well. It can Starting the metaphysis can definitely go into the epiphysis, but typically the age range will be a little younger. Of course, this could have been an EG, but you know the better answer here would have been a giant cell tumor. But look for that more in the pediatric population, as is true for a chondroblastoma, right? Chondroblastoma typically is a tumor that we see in the pediatric population while the physes are still open. Uh, typically, when the physes closes, we almost never see it, so that wouldn't be really a real consideration here. Also, there may or may not be chondroid matrix in the form of rings and arcs. And subacute osteomyelitis is typically seen in the setting of infection when you have a Brody's abscess. Typically, you see a radiolucent lesion with peripheral rim enhancement on the MRI. We saw areas of you know, heterogeneous or even frank solid enhancement there. So I think the best answer here is a giant cell tumor. And giant cell tumors really are benign bone lesions. 20% of benign bone lesions are actually giant cell tumors. And they're benign tumors of ovoid mononuclear cells mixed with osteoclast-like giant cells. Now, 5% of these are malignant and 5% can behave malignantly. And as in this case, you know, there was some cortical breakthrough, but that's not necessarily a malignant feature because even one third to even a half of cases of giant cell tumor can result in cortical breakthrough and even a soft tissue mass. So even though you have these aggressive features in giant cell tumor, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's malignant, but 5% are actually malignant. And there is some uh, potential to have pulmonary metastases in giant cell tumors. Again, the age range is key. Typically, the physes have closed and the patient is 20 to 50 years of age at the age of presentation. It's a really peculiar tumor because, again, it can have aggressive features. You can have cortical breakthrough. You can have soft tissue mass associated with it. Again, it can metastasize to the lungs, but often it can still be a benign lesion. Okay, so, you know, really peculiar tumor with that uh, being said. Typically, it involves, you know, the femur, the tibia, the radius is a nice area where it can be. In the vertebral bodies, it typically involves a sacrum more than any other part of the, uh, the vertebral bodies. The vertebral body is often more involved than the posterior elements in giant cell tumor. Those are all key pearls for understanding giant cell tumor. Usually in a long bone, it's metaphyseal, maybe going into the epiphysis, into the subarticular bone, radiolucent as we saw, but oftentimes it has a non-sclerotic rim. And that's a real key feature. If you see that that often suggests the diagnosis of giant cell tumor. But again, it doesn't always read the textbook as we saw in this case here. And of course, on MRI, it can be heterogeneous. 
heterogeneously bright on T2. Sometimes it can have fluid fluid levels and a small minority of cases. And to treat this, we do a wide resection and curettage uh, to prevent the recurrence of giant cell tumor. Hope that was helpful. Tune in next week for another high yield MSK unknown case. Thank you so much for your attention.